Welcome to Unit 4, Video 2, Classification of Matter. By the end of this video, you should be able to differentiate between pure substances and mixtures. You should be able to differentiate between elements and compounds. You should be able to differentiate between homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures. You should be able to classify a sample as a specific type of matter, and you should be able to describe how to separate different types of mixtures. There are two major categories of matter, mixtures and pure substances. We'll start by looking at pure substances. A pure substance is matter that has a uniform and definite composition. It cannot be separated by a physical process. Only a chemical process can separate pure substances. Elements and compounds are examples of pure substances. For example, the element gold is a pure substance. Every particle in a brick of pure gold is a gold atom. NaCl, or table salt, is an example of a compound, which is a pure substance. Every particle in NaCl is an NaCl particle. There's no other types of particles. And pure water is an example of a compound, a pure substance. Every particle in pure water is an H2O particle. There are no other kinds of particles. Notice the difference between gold and NaCl and H2O here. Gold is a single element, whereas NaCl and H2O are combinations of atoms of different elements. Looking then at elements and compounds, both types of pure substances, we can define an element as the simplest form of matter that has a unique set of properties. We can't break elements down any further by chemical means. Some examples of elements include oxygen, hydrogen, gold, anything on the periodic table is an example of an element. Compounds, on the other hand, are substance substances that contain two or more different elements chemically combined in a fixed proportion. Compounds have different properties than the elements that make them up. And they can only be broken down by chemical means. We can't physically separate the atoms in a compound. We have to chemically separate them. Some examples include NaCl and H2O, as we've already seen. To demonstrate the fact that compounds have different properties than the elements that make them up, consider the following example. This is sodium. Sodium is a soft, shiny metal that reacts violently with water, producing flames. This is chlorine gas. It's a toxic green gas. If we combine this soft, shiny, explosive metal with this toxic green gas, we get the compound NaCl, or table salt. Clearly, this compound has very, very different properties than the elements that made it up. Now let's turn our attention to the other major category. So we're leaving pure substances now and looking at mixtures. Mixtures are a physical blend of two or more components with variable composition. They can be separated by physical means, unlike pure substances. Some examples include salad dressing, which is a mixture of all kinds of different things, oil, vinegar, some seasonings. Air, which as you probably know is a mixture of a bunch of different gases, CO2, water vapor, oxygen, nitrogen, lots of others. And salt water, which as you probably know is a mixture of salt dissolved in water. There are two types of mixtures, heterogeneous and homogeneous mixtures. Let's look at these two in more detail. A heterogeneous mixture is a mixture where the composition is not uniform throughout. Take a salad, for example. Just by looking at this salad, we can see all kinds of different pieces. There's no uniform composition. If you take a sample from one part of this salad, it will be different than a sample from another part of this salad. A homogeneous mixture, on the other hand, is a mixture that has a uniform composition throughout. For example, 
These are all different solutions. These are solids dissolved in water. Each one of these has a uniform composition. As you look through the sample in this uh, container here, we don't see any little pieces. If you presumably take a sample from any one part of this beaker, it will be the same as a sample from any other part of this beaker. It's a uniform composition. Another way to think about uniform versus not uniform composition is with this picture. Here we have a uniform composition. It's a regular arrangement. Whereas here we have an irregular arrangement. It's not uniform throughout. We have a special name for certain homogeneous mixtures, and that name is solution. A solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances in a single phase. In other words, one substance has dissolved in the other. For example, salt water is a solution in which NaCl has dissolved in water. Club soda is a solution in which CO2 gas has dissolved in water. Some vocabulary as long as we're talking about solutions. Generally, we refer to the thing that does the dissolving as the solvent, so this would be the water in both our club soda and our salt water example. And the solute is the thing that dissolves in the solvent. This would be our NaCl in the salt water example, or our CO2 in the club soda example. We dissolve the solute in the solvent. So that was a lot of information. So let's look at an overall organization of all that information. First, we have matter. Matter is the broadest category. We're classifying this matter into two main categories, pure substances and mixtures. Mixtures can be separated into pure substances by physical methods, and pure substances can be mixed physically to create mixtures. But notice, pure substances cannot be separated by physical means. We can divide pure substances into elements and compounds. Elements are the same through, elements have, are made up of only one type of atom, whereas compounds are made up of combinations of chemically combined atoms of different elements. We can chemically separate compounds into their component elements, just like we can physically separate mixtures into their component pure substances. And then on the other side, we can classify mixtures as heterogeneous or homogeneous. Homogeneous is the same throughout, Heterogeneous is not the same throughout. Here's some different examples of types of matter. See if you can classify each of these as either a homogeneous mixture or a heterogeneous mixture, or if it's a pure substance, as an element or a compound. When you come back, I'll display the answers. Here's what you should have gotten. Take a second and check your answers before we move on to the next topic. This brings us to our last objective, separation of mixtures. Recall again that mixtures can be separated by physical means. So what are some of those physical means? Generally, we separate mixtures based on a difference in their physical properties. For example, if you're at the beach and you're trying to separate sand from large rocks, you might use a sifter or a sieve. This takes advantage of the difference in particle size. This is the physical property we're using here. Obviously, large rocks have a much larger particle size and do not go through the sifter like the sand does. Another example might be sugar and water in sugar water. We can separate the sugar from the water by evaporating the water. This process takes advantage of the difference in the physical property of boiling point. Water has a much lower boiling point than sugar and therefore will evaporate before the sugar. There's two fancier versions of each of the examples we just looked at. The first is filtration. This separates a solid from a liquid in a heterogeneous mixture. We've seen this in class. 
This is just like using a sieve to separate sand from large rocks at the beach. Again, this, takes, uh, this makes use of the difference in particle size to affect the separation. The water has much smaller particles and will go through the filter paper, whereas the solid has larger particles and will not. Distillation is a fancier version of boiling away the water in the sugar water example previously. Here, we have a sample of impure, uh, with, that's impure. It has water and other stuff in it. To separate the water from the other stuff, we can boil the water, which will then evaporate. But then if we immediately cool it down, it will recondense into this container down here. This will leave behind the, st the other stuff, whatever else has a, l a higher boiling point than the water, separating the water from everything else in the sample. Again, this makes use of the difference in boiling points. That brings us to the end of this video. Let's quickly review our goals. First, we learn to differentiate between pure substances and mixtures, pure substances being um, things that are uniform throughout and cannot be separated by physical means, whereas mixtures are combinations of pure substances that can be separated by physical means. Then we looked at two types of pure substances, elements and compounds. Elements uh, cannot be broken down chemically and are made up of single atoms of all the, that are all the same, whereas compounds are made up of co a combination of two or more atoms of different elements. They cannot be separated by physical means, but can be separated by chemical means. Then we differentiated between homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures, both types of mixtures, Homogeneous were the same throughout, whereas heterogeneous were not the same throughout. Then we practiced classifying some types of matter. And finally, we described how to separate different types of mixtures by using differences in their physical properties.